God is good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Would you turn to Exodus 16? Let's get right down to business. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. The name of the teaching is the glory of God. Oh. Hallelujah. One thing we need to understand is the glory of God. What is he expressing? What is he talking about? You know, we keep hearing about the glory of God, the glory of God, the glory of God. Amen. And uh, sometimes people are saying the glory of God don't even know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? So we want to get a more understanding of how God manifests his glory and, 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 and know who we are. And when it's like what I've shared before. When, when you understand the things of God, it brings such revelation to you, you know who you are. The more you know about him, the more you know who you are. Amen. 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 In verse 10 it says, Now it came to pass as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the children of Israel that they looked toward the wilderness and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. So God appears in the clouds. He appears in many ways. It says that the glory of God appeared in the cloud. Now you've got to understand something that in a period of time God's glory manifested because he could not show himself. So there was always a cloud or a fire or something to that degree. Okay? <clears throat> and the Lord spoke to Moses saying, I have heard the complaints of the children of Israel. Speak to them saying, At twilight you shall eat meat and in the morning you shall be filled with bread and you shall know that I am the Lord your God. Now God always manifests. Let me share something with you. When the glory of the Lord shows up, he always brings something. Does everybody get it? He always brings something. God is not someone that comes and takes. He comes and brings. The only thing He wants to do is come and take our sin. He wants to come and take our unrighteousness. He wants to come and take the things from me and you that offend us, offend Him, and cause us to stumble. Those are the things He's trying to take. He's trying to take our pains, our sorrows. He bore it all on the cross, didn't He? Amen. So when the Lord of glory shows up, he's always coming to bring something. The songs that we sing, let your glory fall. More of your glory. We want to see your glory. Amen. Well, when we begin to understand what his glory is, I believe that the glory of the Lord is going to begin to manifest even more. Amen. Go to Exodus 24. Hallelujah. In verse 12. Then the Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and be there, and I will give you tablets of stone. See, I share with you, every time God calls you, or His glory manifests. He's always giving you something. In the law and the commandments which I have written, that you may teach them. And what He gives us, He wants us to give. So Moses arose with his ascent. Joshua and Moses went up to the mountain of God. And He said to the elders, Wait here, for us until we come back to you. Indeed, Aaron and her are with you. If any man has a difficulty, let him go to them. <clears throat> then Moses went up into the mountain, and a cloud covered the mountain. Now the glory of the Lord rested on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And on the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. So, for six days, the cloud was there, and Moses waited six days. He knew he couldn't get to that. He knew he couldn't go to the glory unless he was called, because he would have died. <clears throat> in verse 17. Now, understand this. It says, in, on, on this, in verse 16, it says, And on the seventh day, he called Moses out of the midst of the cloud. The sight of the glory of the Lord was like a consuming fire on top of the mountain 
and the eyes of the children of Israel. We see that the cloud turned to fire. He became a consuming fire. So Moses went into the midst of the cloud and went up into the mountain. And Moses was on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. Now understand this. In the glory of God, there is no life or desire of life in the natural. None. There is no desire of life in the natural realm in the glory of God. <clears throat> Moses didn't go up there and pack a lunch. He didn't call out for Domino's Pizza. Hello? Amen. He didn't do anything. He stayed up there 40 days and 40 nights with no food, no water, no nothing. He was fed by God. Because in the glory of God, there is no distance of space or time. In the glory of God, Moses thought it was only probably five minutes. And the next thing he knew, it was 40 days. Does everybody understand that? In the glory of God, you are gone. <laughs> it is no longer you. I can only share with you that when I was, in, when I was taken in the spirit and cloud, in the cloud of glory, I didn't want to leave. The only reason why I wanted to leave was to tell everybody. But in that moment of time, everybody left me. There was no other desire I wanted was to, them to be with him. I could live there. And one day we all will. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Go to 1 Kings chapter 8. God is preparing his church for his glory. Hallelujah. First Kings chapter 8. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You know, if we're not looking for something, it doesn't come. You know, when people don't know about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they don't get baptized. <laughs> because the Lord says, seek and you'll find. Well, first you've got to know what you're seeking. So we want to see the glory of God. And when we want to start sharing and teaching and preaching more of the glory of God, so that as we get together, the glory of God will show up. Not just in drops, but in latter rain. Hallelujah. In 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse something. <laughs> How about verse 10? <laughs> And it came to pass when the priest came out of the holy place that the cloud filled the house of the Lord so that the priest could not continue ministering because of the cloud for the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Now, wouldn't you want that? Yes. <laughs> then Solomon spoke. The Lord said he would dwell in a dark cloud. I have surely built you an exalted house, a place for you to dwell in forever. Now, you and I are an exalted house in the place that God wants to dwell forever but if you don't know who you are you don't know what's going on you won't understand because the word says he was in us is greater than he was in the world but you know what 90% of the believers don't believe it <laughs> they don't believe it they read about it they hear about it they hear it preached they nod their heads, but they don't really believe it. And we must increase our belief in this area because it's belief or faith that touches the heart of God and moves His hand. Amen? It's what you believe is what draws Him. Amen? So we need to get into this place where we're expecting the glory of God to show up. You're expecting the cloud. You've got to begin to look at yourself with the cloud of glory around you all the time. Does everybody get it? Look what happened on the day of Pentecost. And they were all in the upper room. What happened? Tongues of fire came over them. Why? Because they were now the tabernacle of God. 
That was a revelation that the glory of God was in them now. And you know what they did? They went out and did signs and wonders. They not only cast out demons, but everywhere they went, they laid hands on the sick and they recovered. Amen? Amen. And what's happened now is because of this transition of and through the dark ages and everything else, the Spirit of God has been quenched tremendously in the body of Christ. But we are in the latter days in revival. And there's going to be a great pouring out of the glory of God. And we must be ready. And let me share something with you. It's not about how much you know. It's going to be about who you know. And those who are still in relying on what they know, the glory of God will pass them by. Because there is no relationship. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's go to Matthew 6. That's why he doesn't want religion. He wants relationship. In Matthew chapter 6, in verse 9 through 13. Let's read this together. Is everybody there? In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. I'll say that again. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Now we see something here. God is expressing that He is the kingdom, He is the power, and He is the glory. He is. And His kingdom is power and glory. Does everybody understand that? He's not looking for just words. everybody get that? It's not just about words. His kingdom is power and glory. Amen? Amen. Go to 1 John 5. First John chapter 5. Oh, hallelujah. Thy kingdom come. Hallelujah. God wants His kingdom manifested in me and you with power and glory. Does everybody get that? In 1 John chapter 5. Is everybody there? In verse 7, let's read it together. For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are, are what? One. Wow. Now these are the three that bear witness in heaven. Does everybody understand that? Now we just said that when Jesus gave them the prayer, he, and he ended up saying, and yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, Right? Well, you know, it's that God always moves in His Trinity. You know, one day we'll get the full understanding of what's what. But what He's given us by the Spirit, we understand the truth that He's given us to sustain us and to go forward. But you know, there are so many things that Jesus did and so many things that He said that they said they couldn't contain it all. Amen? Amen? So the rest is up to us to get in the Spirit and find out. <laughs> now understand this. We see that there are three witnesses in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Spirit, right? When he said that yours is the kingdom and power and glory, the Father represents all the kingdom. Jesus was the manifested power of God, and the Holy Spirit is the one who brings glory to Jesus and the Father. Does everybody get that? And then we know that Jesus brought glory to the Father 
And the Holy Spirit brings glory to Jesus. Amen. So we see that the Trinity and the fullness of the Trinity, which was manifested in the natural realm, that's why Jesus said, if you see me, you see the Father. And signs and wonders followed him, didn't he? Amen. So we see that what he was expressing to his disciples, your kingdom, you are, yours is the kingdom in power and glory. The Father represents all kingdom. Jesus was the manifested power and the Holy Spirit is the one who brings glory. Does everybody understand that? Okay. Now, glory. Let me explain something about glory. It isn't glory to self. <laughs> there is God's glory. Glory is a representation of God's character that reveals His greatness and authority. It's God's character. It's, it, it reveals His greatness and His authority in who He is. It reveals His beauty. And it brings Him honor. He reveals His glory in three areas. First of all, His glory is revealed through His presence. Okay? And there's three areas of his presence that his glory is revealed. Number one is revealed in his creative presence. Is everybody with me? And that is through his creation. Number two, he's revealed in his manifested presence. And that is with signs and wonders. Like healings and deliverance and so forth. What was the first part of that? The first one was creative presence. And his creation. The second one is his manifested presence. With signs and wonders. And the third one is known as his life-sustaining presence or His unseen presence. Which is in relationship or fellowship with His sons and daughters. It's known as His unseen presence or His life-sustaining presence. Which is in relationship or fellowship with his sons and daughters. So does everybody understand that God reveals his glory through his presence? Amen. Amen. And there's three types of presence. Creative, manifested, and unseen. All right? Go to Psalm 114. Hallelujah. second. <laughs> that doesn't sound right to me. Okay, let's go to Psalm 72. <laughs> glory. To God be the glory. Psalm 72. Skip 114. <laughs> Praise be to God. Is everybody there? 
Let's go to verse 18. Let's read it together. Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things, and blessed be his glorious name forever, and let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. Now that would be considered his creative presence. Does everybody get it? Because no matter where you look, you see life, don't you? You see all the plants and so forth and animals and whatever on the earth. That's known as his creative presence. In Psalm 63. In verse 1 through 5. Let's read it together. O oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you. In a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. So what was he doing? He was going to the sanctuary and seeking the glory and the power of God, wasn't he? He was seeking signs and wonders. Well, see, in the multitude, in the corporate worship, he was going into the sanctuary because he knew that he, when he go there in the praise and worship in the multitude, God's glory showed up. Do you ever notice how much better it is when we get together and worship? Amen. Amen. When we come in one accord. That's what they did in the upper room that day. They came in one accord and the glory of the Lord showed up. And he lit everybody up on fire. Praise God. Everybody was a candle. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, let's go to uh, Psalm 104. Verse 27. Yes, verse 27, Psalm 104. Is everybody there? Let's read that to uh, 33. And verse 27. These I'll wait for you that you may give them their food in due season. What you give them, they gather in. You open their hand, they are filled with good. You hide your faith, they are... Wow, you hide your what? Your face, which represented his presence. Okay, and they were in trouble. You take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, they are created. You renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He looks on the earth and it trembles. He touches the hills and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. Wow. Praise God. The glory of the Lord endures forever. By what? By His presence. By His Spirit. Does everybody get it? Everything is done by His Spirit, isn't it? But His glory is revealed through His presence. And it's His Spirit that reveals His presence, which reveals His glory, which reveals Him. <laughs> glory to God. In 1 Corinthians. No, let's not go there. Let's go to Psalm 24. 
Hallelujah. <laughs> Psalm 24. The glory of God. Oh, we want your glory, Daddy. Psalm 24 and verse 7. Let's all read it together, okay? Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates, lift up your everlasting door, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is like the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Amen. So we see here that he is known as the King of glory, isn't he? When you lift up your gates, you're lifting up your hands. Hallelujah. And you're inviting him in. Amen. Hallelujah. So we see here that he's known as the King of glory. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. First Corinthians chapter two and verse seven. <coughs> Is everybody there? Let's read it. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. So we see he's been known as the King of glory. Now he's known as the Lord of glory. Amen? Go to First Peter 4. <clears throat> Hallelujah. First Pete chapter four. First Peter chapter four and verse twelve. <clears throat> Is everybody there? First Peter chapter 4 and verse 12. Let's read it together. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. Now remember that, okay? <laughs> In verse 13. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you for the spirit of glory and of God rest upon you. On their part he is blasphemed, but on your part he is glorified. So we see here that he's called the what? Spirit of glory. Amen. And the spirit of glory rests upon you. Amen. Glory to God. So if the spirit of glory is resting on you, living in you, we need to know who you are. In Philippians 2. Philippians chapter 2. In verse 9 through 11. (coughs) 
Is everybody there? Let's read it. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, and those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Wow. So there is God the Father, isn't there? So we're, he's bringing glory to God. Who's bringing glory to him? Jesus. Does everybody get it? So the Spirit brings glory to Jesus. Jesus brings glory to the Father. Okay? Go, go to Exodus 33. Oh, praise God. We're flying through the Word tonight. Exodus 33. You know, now, understand this. The first thing that attracted Moses was God's glory by the burning bush, right? Amen. That was the first thing that attracted him. He wanted more. <laughs> Let me tell you something. When the glory of God hits you and you see that light and you change, that's all you want. That's all you want. When you become born again, one of the first realizations that the glory of God is when you get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Amen. You're never the same. It's no more religion. It's no more doing things because you have to. It's no more doing things because you know they're right. It's doing things because you're in love. Amen. Amen. Exodus 33, glory to the Lamb. In verse, um, uh, let's start at 17. Let's read it together. So the Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing that you have spoken. For you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. And Moses, this is Moses, he said, Please show me your glory. Now Moses was wanting more. He was wanting to see more of the glory of God. Come on, he just showed him in the bush. He took him for 40 days. Had him build a tabernacle. All these other things that Moses did, God showed up in clouds of glory, and he said, show me your glory. It wasn't enough. Moses wanted more. In verse 19, then, then the Lord said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Now understand this, in the glory of God is the fullness of his goodness. So that's a different manifestation, isn't it, of his presence. See, if we felt that right now, nothing could get done. We'd be on our faces worshiping constantly. We wouldn't care about nothing. Amen? Amen. It's waiting us. Hallelujah. Okay. In verse 20. Let's read it together. But the Lord said, You cannot see my face, for no man shall see me and live. Now you must understand something. We're building a foundation here so we can go a little bit further. When the Lord said, No man has seen me, He meant no man has seen me. Okay? Okay? But the sons and daughters of God see him. Because you're not men. Moses was still a man. 
In fact, the Lord said, he is my servant. He never called him son. Let's go a little further. In verse 21, And the Lord said, Here is a place by me, and you shall stand on the rock. So it shall be while my glory passes by that I will put you in the cliff of the rock and will cover you with my hand while I pass by. Then I will take away my hand and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Hallelujah. We'll get there. We're building a foundation. Hallelujah. Because what happened? The angels are known as the what? Sons of God. Didn't they go before the Lord? Didn't they talk to Him face to face? Amen. Go to Romans 3. Hallelujah. Now we know that the Lord said about Moses speaking to his servant face to face, but we knew that he always spoke to him through a cloud, didn't he? Amen. <clears throat> hallelujah. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. In Romans chapter 3, In verse uh, 21, 21 to 23. But now the righteousness of God, apart from the laws revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe. For there is no difference. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation by His blood through faith to demonstrate His righteousness because in His forbearance God has passed over the sins that were previously committed to demonstrate at the present time His righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. So we see that the blood, which covers our, washes away our sins now, allows us access to have fellowship with the King of Glory face to face. Hallelujah. So everybody has fallen short of the glory of God, haven't they? When we were sinners, we couldn't, if you, you know, same thing with Moses. Look what happened with um, even those who were believers in Ananias and Sapphira, or Sapphira. And, uh, and they lied to the Holy Spirit. What happened? They died. Amen? Because the glory of God was so strong there, wasn't it? You didn't play no games. What those prophets and the, uh, the, those apostles and those disciples spoke Manifest because the glory of God was so strong. Now God is going to bring us back and we are now closer and closer, not only to the first church, but beyond. Okay? Jesus said that he loved his glory, the glory that he had with his father before he came here. You know, he reminded us of that he had a glory before he came here okay so we know that there was a glory before it happened on the day of Pentecost amen it was a glory before creation and you and I are going to be a part of not only the latter rain but the former and latter rain the latter rain is a representation of the glory of God amen let me share something with you. In some of the worship services, when we start saying, when we start singing the song, I see your glory, there was times when I'll see, like, it, it almost looks like in a natural light bulbs falling. 
but they're raindrops of brilliant white glory that come down. And depending on how big or how small or how much depends on what's going to happen in the service. There are two things that usually happen. How much glory and how much of the Lord I see. Whether I just see his feet or I see whatever. How much. I look for how many steps he comes down behind his altar that determines what's going to happen in the service. Why? Because the closer he gets, the more of his manifestation is. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we see we all fall short of his glory and until, we, until we are washed by the blood which gives us access to the throne room of grace. Well, if you are allowed the throne room of grace, you're allowed the throne room to speak to him face to face. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to Genesis 1. Hallelujah. Okay, now you're ready for the teaching? <laughs> Praise be to God. We're, we're, gonna, we're starting something here. Holy Ghost is starting something here. So just hang on. Strap in. Now, if the thing falls down from the top, don't worry about it. You don't need no oxygen. <laughs> Praise be to God. <laughs> Glory to God. In Genesis 1, in verse 26. Let's read it. Then God said, Let us make man in our image and according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Now we understand something, that God was creating something. He was creating man in his glory. Everybody get it? He wasn't just creating man in his image and likeness. He was creating man in his glory. Okay? In verse 27. So God created man in his own image. And in the image of God, he created him male and female. Does everybody get it? And God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So we see God was creating man. He was extending his own glory. Adam was not a representation of just a man. He was the son of God. Does everybody understand that? He talked with God and walked with God in the garden. No man did that. He talked to him face to face. Okay? Because Adam was not just a man of what we call man. When the Lord said, no man has seen me and lived, it's because man was sin. Adam was not. Okay? Because you'll notice that when they fell, what happened? The Lord separated himself from him. He could not talk to him face to face anymore. Does everybody get it? Amen. Hallelujah. And then from that point on, God spoke to them through their conscience, through angels, hello, through other ways, through the cloud or whatever. But he did not speak to him that time forth face to face. That's when the angels came in play. That's when the angel came to protect the garden from anyone entering it, you know, the tree of life. Because he couldn't allow man to live forever in a sinful nature. Amen? Because he wanted to reconcile. See, God desires a relationship with his children. He 
wants to speak to us face to face. Hallelujah. Now you got to understand, Adam had a glorified body. <laughs> he wasn't flesh and blood like me and you. And most likely he didn't have any blood at all. Because the life of the flesh was in the spirit. <clears throat> it wasn't until they fell that now the life of the flesh became in the blood. Amen? Amen. So Adam and Eve could never die as long as they were eating of the tree of life and upright. They wouldn't fall and cut themselves and bleed to death. That was for sure. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's what's awaiting us. God is restoring us back to that state as sons and daughters of God with glorified bodies. That's the fullness of our glory and the fullness of our redemption. Hallelujah. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 3. Second Corinthians chapter three. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Let's read seventeen and eighteen. Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty or freedom, right? Okay. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So we're being transformed back into the original state of Adam, from glory to glory. This is where we're headed. Okay, so your trials and tribulations are perfecting you. It's letting us know what's still alive in us. <laughs> so we can put it to death and so that the glory of the Lord can be manifested through me and you. Go to Romans 8. Romans chapter 8. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8 and verse 14 through 18. I guess. And we'll see what happens. Is everybody there? Let's read it. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Does everybody get it? So by being led by the Spirit, by walking in the Spirit, you're considered a son of God. Or daughter of God. Amen. So that gives you a right to have relationship with the King of Glory face to face. Hallelujah. Now understand this face to face is also a representation of his presence and his present glory. So, in other words, you can enter his glory without dying. They couldn't do that before unless there were sacrifices and so forth going on. But we have the permanent sacrifice. Jesus. Amen. Go to verse uh, 15. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. That's in relationship, isn't it? The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are what? Children of God. Which gives us the right. And if children, then what? Heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Now, if we're joint heirs with Christ, does Christ have a relationship face-to-face -face with the king? With God? Yes. If indeed we suffer with him, we may also be glorified together. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Glory to God. Go to verse 19. 
For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly awaits for the revealing of the sons of God. Amen. All creation is waiting for me and you. Amen. <laughs> for the creation was subjected to fertility not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption and the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body, which will fulfill the glory of God in me and you. Hallelujah. You won't have to worry about walls stopping you no more. <coughs> Hallelujah. Go to Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3, 31. <clears throat> Hold on. This. Yes, it should be right. Yes, this is it. Proverbs 3, 31. Hallelujah. Let's read this together. We'll go to 31 to 35. Do not envy the oppressor and choose none of his ways. For the perverse person is an abomination to the Lord, but his secret counsel is with the upright. Isn't that wonderful? That means relationship. So that means you and I must maintain uprightness to have a secret counsel or relationship. The curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the just. Surely he scorns the scornful, but gives grace to the humble. The wise shall inherit glory. Say it again. The wise shall inherit glory. One more time. The wise shall inherit glory. But shame shall be legacy of fools. So if you walk upright, your inheritance is glory. So that means we must keep focus. Amen? Go to 2 Corinthians 4. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Hallelujah. And verse 16. 16 through 18. Let's read it together. Therefore we do not lose heart even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Hallelujah. That's from glory to glory, right? For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So there's another weight of glory that awaits us. And this is what we're looking at. This is what our hope is in. He's known as the hope of glory. Amen. Go to Jude 24. Hallelujah. Everybody there? <coughs> Praise be to God. Let's read 24 and 25. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and present you faultless 
before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. So we see here he says, who is able to keep you, but understand this. If you don't keep him, he don't keep you. Why? So that his manifested presence of glory awaits for me and you. The fullness. Amen? Go to Acts 17. Hallelujah. Kingdom, power, and glory. Kingdom, power, and glory. Hallelujah. In verse 26. Is everybody there? Let's read it together. For he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined the pre-appointed times and boundaries of their dwellings so that they should seek the Lord and hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Wow, so if we are the offspring of glory, we are glory. Does everybody get it? Now, he says that we live and have our being in him. The, the Bible tells us that the heavens declare his glory in the firmament, his presence. We understand that, that his glory, it says, is above the heavens. If you were to take the universe and draw a box and call it the universe, the Lord of glory is above the universe. Some, we, our finite minds can't comprehend this. He's actually looking at his own glory. The whole universe lives and has its being in him. Does everybody get it? Now, there's what we call the unseen presence or the life-sustaining presence. When the Lord created the earth, he put a seal of atmosphere over it. And so forth, he created oxygen, which is known as the life-sustaining presence of God. Does everybody understand that? So when Adam fell, in other words, the, the word says that in God picked Adam from the dust, that was known as his word. He breathed in him and Adam became a life, a life being or a... a a living soul. Amen? So when he breathed in him, Adam was in the image and likeness in the glory of God. He was his son. He was not only the reflection of who God was, but he was the offspring of God. Does everybody get it? When he sinned, that left him. God no longer breathed in anybody again. Everybody was born in darkness. See, because in Trinity, you and I are created in a triune being. We have a spirit, a soul, and a body. The spirit is to commune with God. The soul is to interpret what the spirit is doing. And the flesh is what does the works or obeys God. Amen? Amen? Amen. Now, you've got to understand this. So from that point on, in fact, the Word tells us, and I'll back up a little bit, that in Ezekiel, that God will give us a new spirit and His spirit and put His laws in our mind and we will be able to obey Him. Amen. So we understand that from the time of Adam on, they became disobedient, didn't they? Yes. Why? Because they did not have the Spirit of God anymore. Hello? Amen. What were they living on? 
the life-sustaining presence of God known as oxygen. Does everybody understand that? So what was happening is they were still a triune being, but the spirit of God, the, the, the character of God that was in each and every one of us was not birthed yet. It was, not, it was dormant. It was dead. It was separated from God. Does everybody understand that? Okay. So we see that what it had to happen is we had to be, first of all, a seed had to be planted in me and you that we can be conceived. And the Holy Ghost had to come and fill us that we could be born. Did you ever notice that when you're born again, everything looks different? Amen. Certain things are different. Your reactions towards things are different. Why? Because you're a new spirit. Now, in reality, because of the translations, it's called new spirit. But in reality, you are born again. Your spirit that has been in you, that has been dormant, has been awakened. Because when you and I were in the world, we were a living soul. So that means we were led by what we felt, what we thought. We were led by the soul and the flesh and never by the spirit. Because we read a little while ago that those who are led by the Spirit are known as sons of God. So we were not sons of God, we were sons of the devil. That's why Jesus said to the Pharisees and Sadducees, your father is from beneath and I'm from above. Amen? So at one time you and I were the offspring of the devil. But now we've been adopted and are the offspring of the king of glory. Because we're born again. Far be it that we should be entangled in the affairs of this world. Amen? Amen. <coughs> you ready for more? Hallelujah. Let's go to John 2. John 2. So do you understand that there is a life-sustaining presence? In fact, all the, all the plants and everything are sustained by God's life-sustaining presence. <coughs> Amen? Hey, look at it. If, if he manifests himself in, uh, in, in three ways, as Father, Son, or Father, Word, and Spirit, he certainly manifests his presence in three different ways, too. Everything done is triune. Even music is done in triune. Rhythm, melody, and harmony. Everything is done in triune, representing his fullness and who he is. You and I are made of but three parts. Amen? Everything is triune. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Okay. And, and John <coughs> chapter 2. Now, um, in verse 1, what does it say? On the what? Third day. Third day. Uh -huh. Number 3, right? There was a wedding in Canaan, Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Oh, man, if we, we can go a whole teaching on that first verse. Now, both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding, and when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said, woman, what does your concern have to do with me? He didn't say mother. He said woman. Why? Because he was now God. He was fulfilling his office. He just <laughs> got baptized in the Holy Ghost. He went and preached, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And now he went to Canaan. Does everybody understand this? He was no longer his mother. It was a woman. He, she was no longer his mother. She was his daughter. Hello? And I understand this. Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. Let me tell you something. Mary got it. His mother said to the servants, Whatever he says, do it. <laughs> she got the revelation. That ain't my son no more. That's my king and my God. 
the Christ has manifested. The glory of God has manifested. Does everybody get it? She acknowledged it. She knew. So I ain't playing this. Now there was six water pots of stone according to the manner of purification of the Jews containing 20 or 30 gallons of peace. This is an all powerful teaching we'll get to sometime. Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water and they filled them with the, up to the brim. Now they filled them with what? Water. And he said to them, draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. And when the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and did not know where it come from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew the master of the feast called to the bridegroom. And he said to him, Every man at the beginning sets out good wine. And when the guests have well drunk, or they got drunk, then the inferior, you have kept the good wine until now. And it says, This beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. Blew their minds. They were right there. They saw the water be changed into wine. See, now you were water and you've been changed into wine. Does everybody understand it? And out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah. So we see here, this was the manifested presence, wasn't it? Jesus began to... This was the beginning of his manifested presence where, where he began to what? Do signs and wonders. Okay? Go to John 3. And we'll end here. We'll go to John 3 and close up for tonight. Hallelujah. In verse 3. Let's read it together. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God, the kingdom, power, and glory. So he's saying, listen. The Bible says that the kingdom of God is neither here nor there, but where? Within us. So that means that we had to be born again. We had to receive the breath of God himself and not just by his living presence does everybody get it? Amen. But by his creative presence. His manifested presence. All in one. Fulfilling it in me and you. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and is born? Jesus answered and said, Most well, so surely I say, unless one is born of what? Water. And the Spirit. Sounds like water and the wine. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of Spirit is Spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. Does everybody get it? Hallelujah. So to be born, we had to be born again of Spirit. God was restoring us again back to Adam. Does everybody understand that? the fullness of glory. Before the spiritual birth, we lived in a life-sustaining presence. Does everybody get it? But now we've become His manifested presence. And we are to not only to understand the glory of God, but we must understand that we are the offsprings of His glory. You now carry the glory of God. Depending on what you do and where your faith is at, activates either glory. In His glory, when His glory is manifesting in you and through you, He's always bringing something. He brings healing. He brings deliverance. He brings reconciliation. He brings glory to Him. Remember, you are now the glory of God. You are the manifested glory of God. Do not let anything contaminate your spirit. Amen. It's our responsibility to keep us. The Bible says, He who keeps himself, the devil cannot touch. We're to make no place for the devil. 
We're going to increase our faith and our belief, and we're going to talk more about this, about healings and so forth. But I just needed to lay a foundation tonight about the glory of God. And the Word says, if you believe what you ask, it will come to pass. We need to increase our belief. We need to get out of the natural and stop getting entangled in the affairs of the world and get more in the spirit so that what we ask will manifest. Because it's not we who ask, but he who asks through us. God never denies his own request. Amen? Amen. And to God be the glory.